Jeez. Would you like some cheese with your meta? Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Zareth Prevails. Today we're going to talk about 3v3, the best defensive teams. We also have a best offensive teams video that's going to be released at the exact same time as this one. It's going to be found linked in the video description or if you wait to the end of this video you'll be able to just click on that link to the offensive teams video. You can see the picture of it here, the thumbnail. And gosh, there is this meta is so weird, guys. It's it's bizarre. So uh, first, I want to say thanks to my patrons. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for all of your support. I truly could not do this without you. And I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you guys so much. And if you want to support this channel for free, guys, all you got to do is hit that thumbs up button, subscribe, comment, mount the algorithm, guys. It's it's worth amounting. I, I think it will never amount to much. Or you'll never amount to much if you don't mount the algorithm. Oh, whoa, we're in the game madness. We're <laughs> every gosh. Okay, uh, first off, I, I should I should also plug guys. Go watch me live on Twitch. It's free. There's a link in the video description, and uh, it's it's a fun time, guys. It, it really is, and uh, you know, a lot of people who are streaming are just gonna use like the the really. The really standard, boring, like just Galactic Legend stuff, and I, I mean I use them too, but I, I tend to put more more stuff on defense so that we can use some really weird science stuff. Come watch me, find out what, find out the wrong, the hard way, what what went wrong, and you know what's going to be wrong, what's going to be right. It, it's a lot of fun, uh, you know. Be part of the solution too. You you can always listening to chat, hear, hearing your ideas. Love love to love the feedback, but. All right, this this meta, guys. There is there's so much so much weirdness. First off, we have the Doubt Cron, which is off just dark side teams, and they're going to restrict your ability to regenerate your protection, and even more importantly, they're going to restrict your ability to gain turn meter. And there's also Bane in in this meta, which means there's now nine Galactic Legends. Essentially, there's eight traditional level galactic legends and then bane is almost just an honorary offensive galactic legend he just kills he kills almost all the galactic legends especially now that he has a datacron of his own like why did they think he needed that it's just fun it's like okay okay you already killed everything now you can kill everything about the same level but uh, the the question is are we going to be are we going to capitulate and just allow this this uh, cheese meta to to persist I, I just I can't do it guys I don't I don't like doing it people keep the all eight galactic legends and Bane and a bunch of other really strong teams and just stress that's just a stress bowl uh, like everyone just joins up and oh, let's just get the max banners and if I you know like I saw so many screenshots last season of people getting like a few points above the soft max and losing to someone who got a few points more above what they do and it's just so stressful like you lose two you drop two banners and you're just like hitting yourself like stupid I hate you I hate this and I'm just not gonna do it I last last season I went six and three by not capitulating to that madness and I'm, I'm just not gonna give in this time either so that that's that's what this that's what the philosophy is here guys the the defense yes we're gonna keep some galactic legends on offense you can watch and see my reasoning for that in the offensive teams video uh, you know linked in the video description but Here's what the defense plan that, that we're going to be talking about, guys. And if it feels restrictive to you, I mean, it, it'll feel restrictive to all of us. But the idea here, guys, is there's so many good teams out there right now. The only real hope of people not just one-shotting you with abandon by going, by selling out and just keeping, going the boring route of just using the Galactic Legends to, to just conquer everything like that's how you get burned out you're like this isn't interesting i'm just killing everything so easily and still losing sometimes because everyone else is doing it so how do you fight that you put down a lot of teams that people have to think about because their galactic legend could still lose to what you just placed 
So, like Leia, yes, she has a few counters, but if someone count, if someone kills Leia, they have to also think, well, what if my opponent also placed Rey? Or what if they also placed Jabba? They have to think about this, these things, because they don't have unlimited resources at the very top, top end. They have to think about, okay, if I kill Leia with this squad, then that squad's gone, and I can't use that squad on any of these other top tier teams. So, if you can... If you can kind of out, like make them spend all their good stuff early, then it, later they don't have enough teams to be able to take you out with. That's, you know, that's the goal. That's the hope. And that way, at least, at the very least, they're not undersizing you, and hopefully they're dropping some banners. So Leia, probably good to be able to stop people from... Uh, I mean, can, it, it, will it die to Jedi Master Kenobi? Uh, usually, sometimes. I, uh, Leia in threes is still pretty strong. Folks, um, you know, does it beat, does Boosh, like, Boosh had a really good Datacron that was going to beat Leia all the time in threes. Uh, Boosh is now gone, so Jabba, or Boosh Kron is now gone. Uh, I don't think there's anything that just easily, easily beats Leia for really top banners. Well, I guess we'll find out. Maybe the Mirror, maybe the new Ray team will. We'll just have to see. But, uh, the, the team, pretty good on defense, I think. Um... Yeah, she'll kill, she does a lot of damage on offense too, for sure, but I, I like her on defense too, folks. I think she's going to have some value. Uh, Ray, the, the, there's a weird situation, guys, where the Holdo Kron is better than the Ray Kron, but the Ray Kron is really good in threes because it, it revives her, and if they're using the wrong team to kill her, like, it's pretty punishing, guys, and if you fail against Ray with, with your initial team, the next team is going to probably be an inferior counter as well, and it's going to be even tougher to kill Ray two times in a row. Now, there are teams that, like I, the team I suggested in my offensive squads video, is going to mostly just ignore that Kron. And so, the question is, plus not everyone has an unlimited number of Datacrons that are going to help, that, that you know, that they're going to be able to use. So, uh, if you don't have the Ray Datacron... Uh, then I guess use Holdo here as the third. Uh, like always use Ben, and then Holdo or Jedi Training Ray. And the, yeah, this team is gonna get a lot of holds. I think people aren't gonna know what the hell to do against it. Hopefully, hopefully they they don't. Um, Jabba pretty good on defense, I think, unless the Night Sisters counter works on it again. Um, there there is a way to solo uh, or to beat to one shot Jabba with Night Sisters. That uh, if you put the the if you put the the doubt cron on Jabba, maybe you're gonna be able to stop Night Sisters. I'm not sure, so stay tuned on that one. That one's like that that one we might just have to call an audible for now. I'm putting it on defense if people are beating it with Night Sisters. Obviously, that that's such a ridiculously strong value for Night Sisters killing a, a Galactic Legend that we don't want to give our opponents that willingly. So. That's something that we need to just find out. We, we can't test it without uh, without the the GAC actually going because Omicrons are a thing. So, um, okay, this account, we're using my middle account here, guys. Uh, it, I don't have Lord Vader here. This is the team that I would use. I'd put a Doubt Cron on Lord Vader with the boosted offense, and then, yes, it'll die to a lot of stuff. It'll still beat Bounty Hunters, which is really what you're looking out for. Um, and then, I mean, if they want to use a Galactic Legend to beat your Lord Vader, awesome. That is wonderful. That's the goal. You want to run them out of good teams as quickly as they can. They'll probably just use Bane. Bane will beat the hell out of Lord Vader. But he's he's a Galactic Legend for this anyways. Now, what I talked about in my offensive video as well was the Sith Eternal Emperor team could be on offense or defense. If you want to go a little more efficiency style... He's wonderful for just one manning teams and getting really good banners. He is wonderful at that. There's no denying he's great at that. In threes, he's wonderful. He's also wonderful in threes at forcing your opponent to use a really strong team. There's not really many good off-meta options for him, especially with Sith Krons that are out here right now. So I would... I, I'm probably going to be putting him on defense, is my guess. People aren't going to be able to counter him it's the easiest like bane uh, the, you can use most galactic legends to kill him but 
At the other, on the other hand, that just adds to the overwhelming volume of good teams that your opponent's going to have to counter with their own potentially limited number of good teams as well. So that's what I call, I'm call i calling it the flex squad because it could go on offense, could go on defense, depending on what you need against a, a particular opponent. Um, the, the Inquisition team is you know with the with the current empire cron i mean there's there's just crons that cover so many vital factions right now and empire is one of them the inquisition do a crazy amount of damage and there's not anything on offense that they're just like oh yeah we don't just want to use them every time to counter this i think on that they hold more value on defense currently so i w i would recommend putting this team on defense even though it you know, usually people are going to want to use a Galactic Legend to counter it. Sometimes they can use, like, Malgus or something if they have them available. Uh, this would be a good back zone team because people, a lot of times, will spend their Malgus on your Dark Trooper Moff Gideon team up front. And then in the back, they won't have the right team to beat this. And this team with the Empire, Kron, the 400% offense thing, will be able to beat a few different Galactic Legends as well. They'll be able to punch things in the mouth pretty nicely. And... Yeah, I, I think that they're 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 pretty nice on on defense for sure. Now, Dark Trooper Mal Gideon, uh, if you want to keep your Gidme team, which I I recommend keeping your Gidme team, uh, which is you know Padme with Gideon on it, so that you can abuse the courage mechanic. Um, if you want to do that, that like people are all placing their Malakos, Seer Malakos with with crew on defense. That's going to be a standard thing. Everyone's going to do that again this season, I'm I'm sure, and and it'll it'll just be so dumb. But we can use Gidme to beat that pretty consistently, which means you need Gideon to do that. And you, if you have a decent Death Trooper, I I really don't have a great one, but on this account at least. But Death Trooper, there's only a slight step down from in effectiveness. Yes, Dar or Moff Gideon's going to be a better uh, member of this team, but honestly, Death Trooper is going to pull probably the same counter that it was uh, that it was going to pull anyways. And you just put it in the front, hope it draws off Malgus, so then they all have to use something really awkward in the back with against your Inquisition. That that's going to be the goal. So putting Dark Troop Death Trooper here will make them even more bold to kill you with Malgus, and then you'll have Dark Trooper, or you'll, then you'll have Gidme to be able to kill their their ill-begotten Seer Malakos team. Now, if you have the Kelleran Beck Datacron, which you know you should be farming him as hard as you can, this account, even though it's not a can account I spend a lot of money on, I still I'm I'm doing two refreshes, which means 15 attempts a day. I'll have him available. Uh, I'll, I'll probably be able to use him and his Datacron in the last week of this season, but you want it for the five season especially. Uh, one way or another, I've been more and more discouraged by by the. Uh, De General Skywalker on defense. Honestly, guys, uh, he's just he's more and more of a liability and uh, Whatever I you know, I'm not gonna just cry about it But like he, he's still a good character and there are youth other uses for the best members of the 501st so Putting him I actually got a few holds with this team on my main account when I had I had Keller and Beckett relic 8 that that uh season and i put skywalker and ahsoka down and yeah people try to counter with kind of weak teams but now we have the ability to give them a cron like a jedi cron that just destroys people is it gonna be like maybe we'll end up wanting to to combine like maybe we want to put kieti mundi in the team and on the team instead of ahsoka i, I don't really know if we, like maybe we'll just cross off qui-gon i think that in fives the qui-gon uh, we're not going to use Qui-Gon at all. Like, we'll just use Keller and Beck with all of Qui-Gon's friends, basically. And that, that's going to be the team. But for threes, I think we can get away with two of these teams. Of course, you want you need Qui-Gon and company to be pretty dang quick. You need them. Remember, it's plus 80 speed on Kieti Mundi because of his stance, his Zeta, and the leadership from Qui-Gon all add up to be plus 80. These other two are plus 60. You all you want them to be faster than your opponent's Echo if possible, like Bad Batch Echo. So like Kieti Mundi, 293, he's actually 373 because he's plus 80 speed. Anakin is plus 60 speed from whatever this is, so he's 363, etc. And, and then of course Qui-Gon is um, 
369, which I'm sure you guys really love. Those last two numbers of there, so you'll just be distracted the rest of the video. That'll be good for everyone. Um, the, this, Both of these teams could be fairly frustrating for your opponent if they're not prepared to beat them uh, in the right way. And I think Kellerin Beck with his Datacron is going to be absurd. If you don't have his Datacron, well, if you don't have him relict yet, if you don't, he's not all the way farmed, I get it. You should be planning around getting him anyways because he's one of the top characters everyone should be working on for so many reasons right now. Amazing character on so many facets and levels and everything. And once you get him with his Datacron, you're going to be able to destroy a ton of stuff. So, uh, in fives and in threes. Uh, but but if you don't have his Datacron and you just have a, a gear 11, six star Beck, then... Sorry, just don't don't bother, man. Don't don't play don't place this team. I don't think just put a, a regular general Skywalker team down or do something. Um, uh, so saw I I would love to put an Omicron down instead. I put one on uh, Keller and Beck actually just recently earlier today. Um, but I did I did manage to fit one Zeta onto Saw. Of course, the Turret Bay's team is going to be really strong again this season and um. You know, their, their Datacron is just really good, especially with Saw here. I didn't have this last season, but now I, I do have Saw up and running. I have the Turret Cron, and Baze can hang out here. Otherwise, Baze would want to be with, like, Adrad or something on offense. But, uh, other, like, this team is this team is just going to get a lot of holds this season. And we'll we'll just see how that how, how it all transpires. Um, the, this is going to require... People were using Afra all the time last season against it. And they're not, they don't have Afra this season, at least the good version of Afra that, that curb stomped it. This team is gonna curb stomp a lot of Afras until people realize that Afra is just not very good in 3v3 without her amazing Datacron. So uh, enjoy your defensive kills with this team. Just put it in the front bottom zone and watch your opponent flail about for a while until they realize they can use other teams to be able to beat it. Like, like a Seer Malakos team will beat it, for instance. Um, let's see, Aiden. This, this team, yeah, it loses to a really good Adrad team, but with the with the Doubtcron, it's going to steal some banners. It's going to mess with people, and they're going to drop when they don't they, they don't think they should drop. And it, you you also do a ton of damage because of the Empire 400% Cron as well. This team is really good. Uh, is it the best on defense? I mean, no. Uh, you, you're going to lose again. There's going to be a few teams that just curb stomp it, but. The, the idea here is just add it, like, we're going to have to put some some stinker teams down. Like, we'll put some really top-tier teams down, and some teams that people will underestimate, and you'll drop, you'll, you'll steal some banners, or you'll just get straight-up wins. Aiden is one of the best teams out there for that, where if your opponent doesn't have the right team to counter, it's like, if Adred is available and beats your Aiden team, then, I, I mean, that sucks. He, he gets mostly max banners against it. But, if they don't have Adrad... There starts to be a, just a total lack of teams that are going to beat Aiden with the with the Doubtcron. So, yeah, this yeah she's going to be pretty good here, I think. Uh, unless unless Sidious just auto beats her, I, we'll have to see how how Sidious does. He he's so ridiculous, man. I, I, this this Datacron set is really weird. Uh, Grievous, I think he's going to have some value this season, guys. You can put a lot of health on, on him first off with his Datacron, and then there's a pretty good General Grievous one with a bunch of target lock mechanics. I don't know if what, what the right combination with B2, B1, and Magna Guard are, uh, so you're gonna, we're going to have to mix and match, try to figure out which ones are going to be good. Probably, if we can get away with not using B1, that would be pretty cool. That would be pretty cool beca because... He could go with a potential like GL Newt team if you needed him. He could go with Newt plus Django, which is on this next team, of course. But uh, those, you know, you could maybe swap out Dooku on, on this trench team, and uh, you could put Dooku there, and then you could have a GL Newt team potentially if 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 everything goes the way I want it to. Is this team going to be a, a world beater? Probably not, but it might surprise some people how hard Grievous can hit because he's going to have. A health cron that gives him that just boosts his damage all the way to to the moon I, I think however far that is um let's see Admiral Trench 
he, he has a good trench cron again i think this is probably going to be the best version of it of that cron but i mean honestly you could maybe just put newt here i think newt might be a, also a really good one because it, it interacts with his his data cron interacts with newt's uh, extortion quite a bit and he already interacts with his extortion already uh, like trench trench is going to be a problem you, you can also if you don't have the trench cron you can also just put the Doubt Cron on this team, and it's super obnoxious. People don't know how to beat this if it has a Doubt Cron on it. Like this is this is a really good team. If you don't, if you run out of if you run out of uh, set 14 Crons, you can just always put a 13 on and and have good results. Um, so we could do the Triple Rex team where it's Rex and Rex Rex people. Um, it, is it? It's it's not the newest team. People they're they're kind of standard ways to beat it now but if you put the set 13 cron on there and then i mean he's captain rex is a rebel fighter so he gets he gets some boosts from that um like i say it's not the very top end team these days that it you know used to be really strong now it's it's a little bit more known if you're overwhelming your opponent with good teams like solid teams that they have to use decent squads with this is one of those teams that could catch someone off guard and really make them pay. And so, sometimes people just can't clear this. That that happens fairly regularly. Still, it, it's it's a very similar thing to Aiden, where it's like, man, I just don't have anything that beats this level of of just frustration and resilience. Um, the Finn team, guys, if you can get the Finn Cron with the like the you can't you have to hurt everyone's health before you can kill anyone thing, like. I got Zori, finally I got her uh, Relict. She does not have her Omicron yet, but maybe never. But if you can get the Fincron at, for, for this team, it, bad things are going to happen to your opponent. I just got my Hero Finn up to 348 speed because I, I know that's not the fastest, but gosh, with, with a plus 35 from Zori, people people are just going... You're going to outspeed a lot of like Jedi Revan teams, a lot of stuff, and if you get that first turn... And hand off a, a, like it's off to the races and finn is going to be shooting every time and, and do extra damage and ramp that damage it's it's going to be gross if you can get the omicron even better I'm, I'm very interested to see how this team does on defense in fact um though i do think that a doubt cron is going to really make this team struggle at least in threes so on offense if you can find a team that you that can use a doubt cron to delete these guys um I, I would recommend it now now we get to the weird part where i don't know what we do with maul exactly i i almost have paz uh all the way farmed up and if if you can use the paz cron here with maul uh, paz is gonna double assist every time and he hits pretty hard actually for a tank he does a lot of damage and then if if you want you know you could put watt here if you don't have him with trench or something you could put you know, armor if you make him pretty quick uh, people still like paz is still going to it's going to be very challenging because maul's going to force someone to taunt and it's almost always going to be paz like pre-taunt so they can't get to maul there's not a ton of teams that are going to just go in and auto delete this team and if you don't have the if you don't have bo -Katan, uh, unlocked yet this team is going to be fairly frustrating i don't think you need watt just do these three and that that way your lord vader can still do stuff maul will still have a, a solid role if you have isc and gar i guess you could put them on defense that would probably be better on offense honestly because a lot of people are going to be able to just use like doubt to stop them from getting to do all the cool stuff but uh you know this team this team still does okay on defense it's still you still have to problem solve for it and they hit hard enough that it, it'll, it'll get away from you sometimes you're like man i thought i for sure had that counter and it didn't work because they just do so much damage so quickly. They just pile it on. Obviously, I'm not going to do it because I don't have these guys relict, but it is a good team. Um, we have... So, now now we get into, like, okay, Vader is available, I guess, and there's there's a pretty good Kron right now for it where you're, you're going to get a lot of turn meter for him as you apply dots and, not, and you don't release them. Uh, and, and, you know, Savage just does a good job with talent of protecting Vader. Is it the very best version of this, uh, of, of any team? No. No, not really, but I do think that this is going to give some people struggles. If this is your weakest team on defense, I would say that's going to mess with, with a lot of people's offense, even if they do keep mostly cheese. Uh, Commander Luke, I, after a while of thinking, like, I don't, he doesn't kill that much on offense right now, I don't think. 
Putting him on defense with, with a set 13, the just protection up Kron, could mess with people. And then, finally, we uh, one day, I'll, I'll get Tuskins on this account. Apparently, I haven't even farmed uh, them all the way up. Uh, we need to rectify that eventually. But if you have the Omicron on Raider, that's the best 3v3 Omicron you can have almost. This team, with doubt, is still going to mess with people. So I would recommend it. This is a good team on defense still. You can also keep them on offense. It's kind of a similar mechanic to like Dash with Vandor and Hondo. You can just keep them alive forever and be able to delete a lot of things on offense with them. I just like them on defense because people have to use something decent to be able to beat them. And with a doubt cron, you really might be able to trip people up depending on what they put on defense. You know, like Trey is not going to care that much about doubt necessarily, but uh, maybe. I mean, if, if she can't, if there can't be a taunt on her team because of doubt, then, you know, your warrior might be able to just get, a you know, that one-shot kill on someone vital. So, that pretty good team on defense. Let me show you guys uh, my the teams on, on my main account that are a little different from here, and we'll get you out of here. <laughs> okay, we're on my main account, and honestly, there's not that much change, guys. Uh, you know, I already showed you what I would do for Lord Vader, which, uh, you know, just... Put, put a doubt cron with him and then otherwise this is all just stuff I kind of represented on my other account I think moving forward I'll just do these videos from this account because there's not there's just not that much differences these days um unfortunately there's not we're, we're not I've made them too similar um so yeah this is what a, a good Tuscan team looks like I guess with the Omicron on Raider don't put one on Chieftain it sucks uh, really hard. We have bo with um, Paz, and I, so this is another team that'll delete a Galactic Legend. If, if there's a Lord Vader out there, this will just kill it immediately. Uh, and if they have Maul on that Lord Vader team, you probably want Paz because he'll eat all of those hits from Maul without dying. Otherwise, if they don't have Maul, which most people are just doing something weird with Maul lately, uh, you can do the same thing that I was showing you before, where it's Maul with Paz and armor, and then you just use the Paz Cron to, to just assist like crazy. And I think that that's a superior version. Uh, like, this team is better than the Maul with, with ISC and Gar Saxon. And that, that's like the only differences, guys. I My... The, there's not a ton of way more advanced teams this this time around, strangely. So, anyways, I, I think we're just going to pull the plug, guys. Let me know what teams you think are going to be amazing on defense. I would love to hear what your thoughts are, guys. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. And remember that in all things, Zareth prevails.